everything is done for me, I know. I'm unworthy of you, Lord, for it's blessing the freely gives I owe my life to him, my God, so much to thank him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank him for. So much to praise him for, you see. He has been so good to me. And when I think of what he's done and where he brought me from, my God, so much to thank him for. Stop and say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Cause one day I'll reach sweet heaven shore. Oh, please let me near once more. I got so much to thank him for. So much to thank him for, so much to praise him for, you see. He has been so good to me. And when I think of what he's done and where he brought me from, my God, so much. Thank him for. Amen. You may be seated. We give God all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. Just want to greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank God for this privilege once again. We can come and worship the Lord and uplift his wonderful name. I want to call upon my sister Jackie this morning. She's got a song. Amen. I reach all in Jesus' name. Now it's been some time since I made up my mind to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I faced the fears and shed many tears, but patience has stood by my side. When I hear Satan say, you're not even saved, you're traveling down the wrong track. I recall once again where grace was still sent, down memories lane I take him back. And I'll take him back to the time at an old-fashioned meeting Where the presence of God filled the air Where the saints were singing of praise and glory Sweet melody seasoned with prayer Where one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was life to a poor dying saint I walk him down the aisle To a place at the altar Where grace fell And I know I got saved Well, I never knew love Till it came from above And took its abode in my heart 
The sun now shines brighter, my burdens are lighter since Jesus gave me a new start. My songs have been changed, my life rearranged, my journey is now a new path. And when that old accuser tells me I'm a loser, I remind him how he lost my soul, and I take him back to the time at an old-fashioned meeting where the presence of God filled the air, where the saints were singing of praise and glory, sweet melody seasoned with prayer, where one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying saint. Well, I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved. Now I never knew love till it came from above and took its abode in my heart. The sun now shines brighter, my burdens are lighter since Jesus gave me a new start. My songs have been changed, my life rearranged, my journey is now a new path. And when that old accuser tells me I'm a loser, I remind him how he lost my soul. And I take him back to the time at an old-fashioned meeting when the presence of God filled the air, where the saints were singing of praise and glory, sweet melody seasoned with prayer. When one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying saint, well, I walk him down to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved when one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying saint well I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved This is a Jay, you can get ready next. <clears throat> all in the wonderful name of Jesus to the glory of God I'll sing a song I cannot comprehend the price my Savior paid to redeem me from the bonds of sin so that I could live again. From my mind I could not erase the cruelty that my Savior faced just thinking what He's done for me Oh just thinking what he's done for 
命。Oh, without Him, I don't know where I'd be. A warmth comes over my soul, and the tears begin to flow. Yet he said he'd come again. He's gone to prepare a place so that I could live again. When I read of his beauty rare, my trial just cannot compare. Just. What He's done for me, oh, just thinking what He's done for me, oh, without Him, I don't know. And the tears begin to flow. Just thinking what He's done for me. Oh, just thinking what He's done for me. Oh, without Him, I don't know. Over my soul, and the tears begin to flow. Just thinking what He's done for me. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the majestic name of Jesus. The Father's love for us, our vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of sin! The Father turns His face away, as wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the Lamb upon the cross, my sin. Upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my mocking voice call 
held out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it No power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give. I know with all my heart His wounds has paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart We are grateful for all those songs, and we are grateful for the great ransom price that our Lord and Savior has paid for us. Once we were in shame and unbelief, without hope, but God has provided His only Son that today we can be without shame, my brothers and sisters. We can face this world having a hope in our life and a joy in our heart. You know, my brother said on Sunday that. Uh, you know, they, 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 they put a rumor that Jesus' body was stolen away. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that. You know, the world can come with a lot of rumors, my brothers and sisters, and they can say even it was not a virgin birth and all that. But who can take out what's in your heart, my brothers and sisters? You know, it just reminded me, uh, you know, my brother Mac, when I was young, he told me uh, he went to a home and uh, they had some type of business in that home, but he said he's seen the, a picture of a cross and, you know, the, the road to Golgotha, you know. And he said, you know, that, that uh, picture became a reality. It, it was real. He said when he saw that picture, he saw Jesus actually being crucified and carrying that cross. And as, you know, he came home, he said, with a conviction in his heart. Now, who can rob you out of that, my brothers and sisters? So the world can say what they want to say, but there's something that God placed in our heart that nobody can take away. And we just want to thank God for that. And we want to thank him for this day. We want to thank him that we can come into fellowship. We can leave everything aside, my brothers and sisters, in this world. There is so much of entertainment out in this world. But... Uh, you know, I thank God that he placed that thing in our heart to be found in the house of God. I just want to bless him. Shall we stand this morning? <clears throat> Ah. Uh -huh.
fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life, oh mercy rewrote my life, mercy Wisdom, saith the Lord. Reverence, saith the Lord. I need honor, saith the Lord. Indeed, the price that has been paid, saith the Lord, was not easy, saith the Lord. But because I have found it fit beyond the cross that your names can be written in the Lamb's book of life, engraved by my blood, saith the Lord and the Word to my brother Deva. Amen. I want to greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your divine presence this morning, my God. Lord, we are a thankful people, dear God, living at this hour of time, dear God. We are thankful, Lord, that you sent your son 2,000 years ago, Lord, and you left an open tomb, my God. Lord, we are thankful, dear Lord, that you are the one, Lord, that we look to this morning, my Father, Lord, to guide us, to lead us, Lord. I pray for every child that has come here, dear God. I pray that you'll minister to them through your word, my God. I pray for those that are not here. I pray for our brother. Basil's family, my God, be with them, my Father. Be with every child, Lord, even across the lands, Lord. And be with the nation of Israel, my Father. We come at this service now in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, my brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord for this wonderful time that we have to realize that God has uh, allowed his son, my brothers and sisters, to come into this world 2,000 years ago, uh, and uh, he has left a memorial behind of an empty tomb, uh, so that no matter what goes on in our life, uh, we have an example that uh, if we have the same spirit in us that he has, uh, then we shall rise as well. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we have a message this morning, walking with Jesus, while he opened the scriptures, walking with Jesus while he opens the scriptures. Uh, and uh, our story begins, my brothers and sisters, almost 2,000 years ago. 
Brothers and sisters, on that resurrection morning, when there was much confusion, my brothers and sisters, uh, amongst, I would say, the nation, as well as the disciples, brothers and sisters, uh, that had placed all their hopes uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that particular morning, as we know, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, the women went to the, gra to the grave, and my brothers and sisters, they found that the stone moved away. And my brothers and sisters, they did not expect this. But after all that had taken place, my brothers and sisters, uh, and the encounter of the angels, uh, two men, my brothers and sisters, uh, were wanting to go, brothers and sisters, to a city, a little town uh, called uh, Emmaus. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, that may uh, seem as a, a story that is fitted in the scriptures, but this morning we're going to use that, brothers and sisters, uh, to bring it to our day and our time. Because, my brothers, as much as uh, there was a day when Jesus rose uh, from the grave, and my brothers and sisters, there was the moment when the disciples uh, were so confused uh, and uh, wanted to go away from Jerusalem, away from all what was going on there. We see that Jesus took the time to appear to them. And my brothers and sisters, uh, as we live in this last fragment of time, Jesus Christ, uh, by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, uh, has not left his church. He is still with us. And he still walks with us. So my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, uh, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus. Brothers and sisters, uh, this was a little town some uh, 15 uh, kilometers away from Jerusalem where all, I would say, uh, the occurrences that happened from the Friday to Sunday was just being noised abroad. And it says, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, that's about 15 kilometers. The Bible says, uh, and Jesus appeared on the road to Emmaus. Brothers and sisters, uh, these two men, as they were journeying, brothers and sisters, uh, they didn't want any other company because they were so troubled. Brothers and sisters, uh, the man that they placed all their hope in has uh, died. They probably were there to see him die. And now uh, with the different conflicting statements uh, from brothers and sisters, those that went to the tomb uh, and all that, their minds couldn't take it. Uh, and they decided, well, let's just go back. Probably that's where they stayed. And uh, they never expected that a figure will come uh, and join that conversation. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we are living at this time. Though all that is going on in this world and this lot, uh, and I, I don't have time to go to too much of what's happening, but we will talk about it. But brothers and sisters, uh, remember, God uh, doesn't uh, live high up there and he leaves us down here. He knows everything that is happening Every thought we are thinking, and my brothers and sisters, he can join our conversation at any time. And he is the only one that has all the answers uh, to all our questions. So we see uh, that Jesus appeared to them. Now my brothers and sisters, to bring it to our day, we realize the crucifixion took place some 2,000 years ago. A lot of things have happened in the past seven church ages, brothers and sisters. And in each of these church ages, Jesus uh, had not left his people. He has been walking in the midst of the church ages. And now we are living in this Laodicean church age. And the things that are occurring today, the world doesn't know, uh, brothers, uh, anything about what has happened yet because uh, they have uh, closed the door to revelation. They've closed their minds uh, to what God has revealed at this hour of time. Brothers and sisters, the, the denominational world, uh, they know they will all go to church today. Uh, and brothers and sisters, and maybe tomorrow uh, they'll have uh, Easter bunnies and all of that. And uh, I've got nothing against that. I, I, I like uh, the, the bunnies, but there's no revelation behind it. 
There's nothing to tickle your heart. There's nothing to set your soul on fire. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's one thing to walk in tradition, and it's another thing to have your soul uh, on fire for the Word of God. And it's going to take the Word of God uh, to fire your soul. And my brothers, you cannot close your eyes and your ears uh, to what God has revealed at this hour of time. And Jesus, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, has said, uh, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus is in heaven. How could he say that? It's not physically we are with him. It's revelatory picture in our mind, what he has in his mind. So brothers and sisters, in this Laodicean church age, God allowed the truth to be unraveled to us. We are living in 2023. And my brothers and sisters, we cannot live uh, with the dark ages truth. We cannot live with the Pentecostal truth. Or oh, what happened 50 years ago? We have to uh, allow God to upgrade our soul. And so uh, have that in the back of your mind as we follow this picture. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, as I said uh, on Friday and the other services, there is a very fluid condition in Israel. The world is not expecting a storm. The world is not expecting an explosion. But brothers and sisters, uh, slowly but surely, the Middle East uh, is getting closer and closer for that fire keg of explosion to be lit. Brothers and sisters, if you've been following the news, you know, brothers and sisters, what's happening uh, on the Temple Mount. Brothers and sisters, all of the Arab worshippers go and lock themselves in the temple overnight, and brother sends videos to the world that the temple mount is being taken over, and then they want the missiles to pour into Israel. And the government of Israel is having a difficult time because there's about 100 to 120,000 people on the street fighting uh, the judicial uh, reform. And uh, the defense minister, brothers and sisters, as well as uh, the prime minister, are not on the best of terms. So the world at large, uh, especially the Arab world, knows that Israel is at its weakest point. It was the similar way in 1967. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but what we have to see, brothers and sisters, uh, Iran is an octopus. Uh, you know what an octopus is? It has uh, many tentacles. It does not do the dirty work. It allows its puppets, nations, to do the dirty work. Israel is a very tiny nation, my brothers and sisters. And, uh, and they are facing now the, the tentacles of Iran. And brothers and sisters, uh, all these nations like Syria and Lebanon, Iran and Jordan and Saudi Arabia... For a long time, they've stayed out of the picture. Brothers and sisters, but you know how on Thursday or Friday, those uh, missiles uh, came into from Lebanon and from, brothers and sisters, uh, Hamas sent the missiles. And uh, we see now that this is a Middle East map. Brothers and sisters, yes, Yemen. It's a nation near Oman, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Brothers and sisters, all the while, Yemen, the Houthis from Yemen, they were sending their missiles to Saudi Arabia. They were fighting with Saudi Arabia. But because Iran told them, hold on, hold it, because they supply the weapons to Yemen, now my brothers, they've got nothing to do. they bored. And they say, we want to take the Palestinian cause. And my brothers and sisters, all the way from here, they want to send brothers and sisters their drones uh, to Israel. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that now turns the picture in the Middle East uh, on a different level altogether. And last night, brothers and sisters, uh, from Syria, Syria, brothers and sisters, you know the story of Syria. 
And they, I would say, have the cheek to send six rockets uh, into uh, Israel. Now, my brothers and sisters, Saudi Arabia is now becoming friends with China. And my brothers and sisters, we have to realize Israel is now getting in a very, very difficult situation. Some way, brothers, if I would say, uh, I can't see how, brothers and sisters, uh, they're just going to overcome uh, and quieten what is going on. Remember, they've got 10 days more, brothers and sisters, for Ramadan to end. And it's in this atmosphere they always try to create a problem. I'm not saying the era of the miraculous uh, will, will, will end you out of this. We have to watch this. But brothers and sisters, Israel is being placed uh, in a very difficult situation. Because when you got Yemen here, yeah, that the Houthis, brothers, uh, they have no kindness in art. And my brothers and sisters, uh, Iran supplies all what she needs. She stays out of the war. But brothers and sisters, uh, whether I would say Israel would want to eat Iraq, uh, uh, I would say uh, Iran and the nuclear facilities at this time, uh, well, time will tell that story. So at this moment of time, the world, brothers, is fast asleep. They don't see what is the picture. They don't see how this is building up. And my brothers and sisters, that is why I have to say, when 2,000 years ago, Jesus was talking to his disciples all the time. Brothers and sisters, they were interested uh, in the fishes. They were interested in the loaves. They were interested in all the things that were going on. But nearly every week or every period of time, he told them the Son of Man must be crucified. He told them the Son of Man will be taken by Gentiles and, and they will kill him. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says uh, the disciples uh, didn't know it. You read the word of God. Uh, they didn't understand that at all if they didn't want to hear that. Brothers and sisters, uh, similarly today, people take only certain passages of scripture. And the rest, uh, brothers, they leave it aside. So we see, brothers and sisters, Jesus no doubt has spoken to us about this that is going on by the Holy Spirit. So we see Jesus joins the two men to Emmaus. And my brothers and sisters, I don't have the full story here, but you can go home and read it. And it says, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. Brothers and sisters, a lot has happened in that three days. And uh, you got 15 uh, kilometers and they were talking about everything that had happened. And uh, came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, every now and then they stopped. They argued. And they said, no, this couldn't be. In, brothers, remember, they loved Jesus Christ. And what they saw happen on the cross, it was hard for them to believe. Because they didn't believe that there was going to be such a thing. And the resurrection also was, an, was something that was too far-fetched for their mind. So they talked and they reasoned. Jesus himself drew near and went, went with them. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit does not leave us. How many times we talk? And at that precise time as you talk, brothers and sisters, either somebody phones uh, and they talk in the same thing that you was thinking. The Holy Spirit knows that. And my brothers and sisters, uh, because uh, Jesus Christ, he could have went anywhere else. But he knew that these two men, they had reached rock bottom. Brothers and sisters, and they needed uh, something uh, to uplift them. And we will see, Jesus didn't say now, uh, you know, uh, let me perform a miracle uh, so that you can... You know, just be uplifted. Jesus didn't do that. There is a place for that. But brothers and sisters, we'll see what Jesus did to be able to light a flame in their hearts. And the Bible says Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Brothers, if you don't have an interest, 
brothers and sisters of what is happening at this moment of time, then don't feel that the Holy Spirit or Jesus uh, in the form of the Holy Spirit is just going to come there and uh, knock on your door violently because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. If he sees that you have a hunger or a question in your heart, you can be rest assured, brothers and sisters, uh, he's going to come by. He may use different forms, but to be able to commune with you. The Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come in and sup with him. Brothers, so uh, the Holy Spirit has been knocking to the world. Uh, but brothers and sisters, uh, they only take so much and not the rest. So they, their eyes were, were shut to knowing who he was. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus uh, uh, in the scriptures asked the question, what kind of a conversation is this? You'll walk, you'll talk, and you'll ask sad. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he, he, he probably spoke it to them uh, in a way uh, to just uh, make them feel uh, this is just not on. And uh, well, they told you know what, where, where do you come from? Don't you know what has gone on in the past three days? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto them, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou no, and has not known the, time, the things which are come to pass there in these days? In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, Jerusalem has been buzzing for the past uh, three days. There, there's a man that shouldn't have been crucified. He was crucified. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we are right to feel this way. And my brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus looked at them. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he, he realized, brothers and sisters, these are my disciples. I walked with them for three and a half years. I talk to them. I explain to them many times that I will have to die. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and he was expecting uh, that they shouldn't be walking down the road uh, in this, uh, I would say, confused state uh, and this sad state. And I'll have to say, brothers and sisters, as we look at that, how do you think Jesus is feeling at this moment? Brothers and sisters, after 2,000 years has passed by, and God has sent a messenger in this age, and has unraveled so much of God's word, and the, the Middle East, brothers and sisters, uh, is slowly but surely going to go into flames. Their hearts of children of God should be excited for what is going on at this time. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, remember, Jesus has come there, and uh, he expected a little more from his disciples. But brothers and sisters, uh, he stood there. And brothers and sisters, he is going to reprimand them. And they are saying, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. And they have crucified him. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. Brothers and sisters, they were explaining to what they call the stranger. We've heard to all this, but we don't know. We don't have an assurance in our hearts if this is true or if it's not true. We've got the word from the women that we know. We see the tomb is empty. We have also what Pilate's soldiers are saying. And we decided to just take a 15-kilometer walk and rest our minds. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, who is going to ever stabilize their hearts and stabilize the mind? And look at it today, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, we were walking down. Our neighbor knew that we were going to church said, please pray for us. Uh, the world is going upside down. She's not a Christian. But, brothers and sisters, if they are recognizing the world like this, what is going to stabilize the world? 
It's not going to get any better, brothers and sisters. Uh, if this situation in the Middle East uh, builds up further, it's not going to get any better. Brothers and sisters, but nonetheless, uh, they needed somebody to put the picture together. They needed somebody to just put all of these things uh, in the right place. And my brothers and sisters, uh, this is what the young women had told uh, these two, two young men. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so, as the women had said, but they saw him not. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus Christ, these are his words. Imagine, brothers, he's a stranger and he's looking at two, uh, I would say, individuals that are downhearted. And Jesus has not changed his tune. He said, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart. Brothers, how can Jesus, the loving Savior, the caring Savior, the one that is full of compassion, who's supposed at this moment, uh, brothers, be there to, uh, you know, say the most soothing words. He said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus by the Holy Spirit has to be in this generation of time, brothers, you look at this generation and say, why have they closed the doors to truth? How come uh, they have allowed themselves to come into the state? Because, uh, brothers, uh, these are the directive where Jesus has not lost his composure. And he knows for three and a half years uh, he has ministered to these disciples. Brothers and sisters, somehow they did not catch the picture as he expected them to. He said, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Brothers and sisters, in other words, uh, Jesus cannot go into glory unless this was done. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we are living at this hour of time. And uh, we have to understand there are certain things God uh, wants us to understand about what is going on in this world. He said, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into this glory? Brothers and sisters, if the church world this morning had hearkened to what God has opened up in this hour of time, they would not, brothers and sisters, uh, be with the masses of the world that will be saying uh, that Israel uh, should just allow the Palestinians to do what they are doing and, brothers and sisters, open up uh, everything for everybody. They don't know the book. They don't know what the Word of God has said. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is uh, past tense <laughs> in the sense that Jesus has already come. He paid the price as an open tomb. And uh, brothers, that's our perverted scripture to believe in the resurrection. But from there, we've got to understand uh, what about our day and our time. Brothers and sisters, uh, so Jesus says, Ought Christ not to have suffered these things and then enter into his glory. Plus, Jesus knew he had a 15-kilometer stretch. Brothers and sisters, a lot of things that transpired for three days. He's got a lot of stories to talk about. Brothers and sisters, that are unexplained details. Nobody yet knows what happened down in the corridors of hell. Nobody knows, brothers and sisters, uh, how uh, all the saints, brothers and sisters, uh, from Adam uh, right to the thief on the cross uh, has been resurrected uh, and they're in Jerusalem. And my brothers, uh, there's so much of exciting news uh, for him to talk about. But he still has the time uh, for two men uh, who need uh, an understanding of the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, he could have posted, uh, you know, I took the keys uh, out of Satan's hands. Uh, you know, I brought all the saints out. Uh, but that, that was for another time. Here were individuals that needed their minds to be straightened out. And my brothers and sisters, and beginning at Moses, brothers, 
I can see him going to Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, uh, taking everything. Brothers, the lamb slayed, uh, the blood placed upon uh, the doorpost. Uh, brothers, uh, everything you read in scripture, he began to place it to them. said, don't you know, all this was written, was written. Uh, why did you eat the lamb, brothers and sisters, uh, with bitter herbs? The bitter herbs symbolized my suffering. You just can't eat the, 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 the lamb and forget about the bitter herbs. So he began at Moses and he didn't forget all the prophets. Brothers, uh, he spoke as I 53, what we read uh, on Friday. All the prophets. He expounded. This word expounded is not he just read the scriptures. He expounded the scriptures. He took the scripture and he gave the understanding of it. Unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Brothers, he wasn't talking Christmas stories. He was talking things relevant for his hour and his day. Walking with Jesus as he opens the scriptures. Not for another day, but for your day and your time. Brothers, sir, if Jesus has to walk with us, by the Holy Spirit, what would he do? How would he relate to our time? What he would open to us the same scripture over and over again? No, the Bible says uh, he began and he had an ending point. He knew when he finishes, there's a flame of fire inside that soul. That brothers, the Bible tells us uh, they finished their 12 or 15 kilometer walk and immediately they left again uh, and went back to Jerusalem. Brothers, nobody does something like that. Brothers and sisters, uh, especially after what had, had gone on. Brothers, uh, a flame had been lit in, in their hearts. So brothers, uh, Jesus began at Moses. All the prophets, he expounded unto them. All the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Brothers, if Jesus has to walk with us today, what would he do? Brothers and sisters, do you think he's going to just go back and just open a scripture that's unrelated to us? Brothers and sisters, uh, remember what's in Matthew chapter 25. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Brothers, uh, he has come uh, and I would say, uh, in the sense, by his word, when a prophet messenger was in the scene, a carcass was delivered. We may not have been on the road to Emmaus, but brothers and sisters, uh, there's been a road uh, that the Holy Ghost has been walking in our generation of time. Brothers and sisters, uh, that shout echoed out for us to come out of the denominational world. And brothers and sisters, enter into uh, that carcass. Brothers and sisters, uh, and we realize uh, that the Bible tells us that in Matthew 24, 28, where the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Not the sparrows, not the chicken, but the eagles. Brothers and sisters, that is why we are a special bird. We are a different type, a different appetite. And my brothers and sisters, so uh, we see uh, as the scriptures were being unraveled to these disciples, God in our last days has been also in this hour opening to us. There's been 2,000 years, brothers, a different dispensation of time. We are not of the law age. God has shown us that brothers Jesus was standing or walking in the midst of the candlesticks. You can read that in Revelation chapter 2, verses 1. Jesus has been walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Not on earth, but in heaven, but in spirit form in us. What was he walking and doing? How do we know what he would be doing in the seven church ages? What he did uh, when he walked with these two men? Brothers, uh, he was not telling them stories about another day. He knew what their purpose was, what had brought them to where they were. And my brothers, as Jesus has been walking from Ephesus through these different... In Laodicea, brothers, he's been walking. And he walked when they 
I would say prophet was on the scene to let us know, brothers and sisters, what age we were living in. And so, brothers, it's supposed to have set fire in the hearts of children of God. And my brothers and sisters, we know while he was a prophet on earth for three and a half years, he preached. He pointed the people. But brothers and sisters, uh, as his disciples, they didn't see it. And likewise, when a messenger was on earth, brothers and sisters, in our time, there's a lot of people that refuse to move on to what God has got next. But nonetheless, Jesus didn't stay in his prophetic role. For 2,000 years, he has been a high priest. And my brothers and sisters, soon uh, that seven seal is to be broken. And he will enter, brothers and sisters, into his next role, uh, where it will be, brothers and sisters, uh, that rule uh, or the judgment seat of Christ. So, we see as they walked on, brothers and sisters, I tell you, these two disciples, they, they never heard it on this wise. Because Jesus now is free from the purpose that he came. And he can now look back and he can pull every scripture. And I will have to say that 15 kilometers was not like just a, two, a kilometer or two. They continued walking. And my brothers and sisters, sir, Jesus, the Bible says, he made as if he was going to go on. There, there are said, come, uh, and my brothers and sisters, why someone would think that Jesus was a somber man, you know. But you know, he, throughout the scriptures we see that the Spirit of God acts that way. He wants to test us to see what we would do. Brothers and sisters, when situations happen uh, and you see it's not on the scene uh, and you think, what has happened? And it seems like uh, he's gone. Brothers, uh, these disciples didn't want the conversation to end. They, ex they, they felt it should have been 60 kilometers fine. And Jesus made us say, well, okay, bye now, I've got to go. Brothers, the Bible says, but they constrained him saying, Abide with us. Brothers, look at this out of time. When the revelatory spirit from Brother Branham's day to Brother Jackson's day to our day, it's the same call of revelation. If you have been stimulated by the spirit of revelation, and as it's been moving and you're now in the stead watch, shouldn't you be say to the spirit of God, abide with us. Brothers, continue with that flow. Abide with us, for it is towards evening time. Brothers, we we'll want the Holy Spirit to remain with us because time is running out. And the day is far spent. Brothers, Paul picked up these words. The night is far spent. The day is far spent. And brothers, Jesus says, and he went in to tarry with them. What a gentleman. The Holy Spirit, when you constrain him, he will come and dwell with you. And brothers and sisters, uh, he is there, as the Bible says, to sup with you concerning his word. Brothers, the day is far spent. The world will say, well, we don't know. Jesus can come a hundred years from now. Brothers and sisters, we are not setting any date for the coming of Jesus. But neither are we to put the scriptures away. If the Holy Ghost was here, like Jesus was on the road to Damas uh, Emmaus, brothers and sisters, uh, he could tell us, oh fools of heart, why didn't you believe all that the prophets have said? We say, well, we believed Isaiah 53, we believed what this He'll say, well, what about Isaiah 6, 1 and 2? After two days, I am going to restore or revive Israel. Couldn't you be able to see there were seven church ages? And couldn't you see how 2,000 prophetic years are coming to a close? Brothers and sisters, you know, God didn't only help us by telling us the seven church ages through Brother Branham's ministry. Brothers and sisters, you also showed us through the scriptures that there is a way to work the timeline out. 
brothers and sisters, uh, of how 2,000 prophetic years uh, finishes off from the time the first church age started to the time, brothers and sisters, 2,000 prophetic years. Brothers and sisters, around 2028, 27, 2,000 prophetic years will be drawing to a close. Now, you don't go by a calculation or, or a date and a time. You watch the events that are on ground. Brothers and sisters, if Israel uh, is exploding, then somewhere you, ha you have to realize and recognize the day and time you live in. That's why Jesus could tell them, brothers and sisters, the night is far spent. Brothers and sisters, uh, recognize uh, your time that you live in. Because uh, it's pointless as some say, We'll wait to the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel, you know, when the Ezekiel 38 and 39 transpires. Then we'll look backward and we can work out when the two days started. Brothers, a baby class child can do that. After it's over, who can tell you, brother, who can't tell you when, what was your bad day? Brothers and sisters, uh, that's not a Holy Ghost inspirational thought. We have to allow the Spirit of God to search the Scriptures. And my brothers and sisters, don't run ahead of the Scriptures, but walk with the Scriptures. And my brothers and sisters uh, will say, well, why is it so important? Brothers, uh, God gave uh, the, early, uh, the Jews a menorah to place uh, in the tabernacle, seven branches of the candlestick. To a Jew, number seven is not an important number as number 12. 12 is their number. Seven is the Gentiles' number. Seven church ages, uh, seven stars, seven seals. Uh, plus, that's Gentile time. So what is uh, a menorah of a seven candlestick doing uh, in uh, the midst of the tabernacle? It was to show that God... Uh, had the Gentiles in mind as well. And also that there were going to be seven church ages. And he told Hosea, brothers and sisters, after two days, but he didn't tell Hosea after the seven church ages will draw to an end. Brothers and sisters, because John on the Isle of Patmos would be given that inspiration. But he told Joshua, I wanted to go seven times round Jericho. And the seventh day, you go seven times. It was to tie brothers and sisters that God will restore his truth to the church ages. And by the time we're drawing to that period of time, there'll be a war in the Middle East. Brothers and sisters, as Joshua fought and shouted and the walls of Jericho came down, Michael will come into Israel and all that is going on, brothers and sisters, uh, will be quelled uh, by the same angel that was with Joshua. So, brothers and sisters, God uh, told uh, them that. Now, my brothers, Jesus comes in. It says, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. Brothers and sisters, uh, how those words, he sat at meat with them. Brothers and sisters, after the resurrection, he did that. But that terminology, sitting down at meat, is a phrase that you align with the Lord. He somewhat likes that. You see that everywhere, brothers, when he came in the midst of his disciples, he said, uh, uh, do you have any, anything to eat? Brothers, when he came after the resurrection and he was on the shore. He said, children, have you got any fish? Uh, and when they came, there were fish already there. And uh, he said, come and dine. There's something about Jesus that this word, uh, brothers, he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. Brothers, he was doing something in the natural that by the Holy Ghost, he will do that through the seven church ages, giving meat to his children and breaking the bread. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, he was in no hurry. Brothers and sisters, uh, yeah, there, was, there was a special way 
Plus, you know, we sometimes said, well, just to shout, you know, but Jesus was never that way. Brothers, there was a way he took the bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. That the disciples themselves thought, Lord, we, we, we cannot have that patience. We, we cannot go that way. But they, they knew that he did it in a certain way. Because, brothers, uh, he was to type the breaking of the bread of life. He knew that it meant something more than that, brothers, that he was just doing. Brothers, in the time we now live in, brothers and sisters, uh, the church, after Brother Branham had come on the scene, and my brothers and sisters, uh, living in the Laodicean church age, and Jesus had come, brothers and sisters, and brought a carcass through a messenger. And brothers and sisters, when Brother Branham had met that accident, Brothers, sir, if you could have heard to the conversations of thousands and thousands of people, brothers and sisters, sir, this is the man that we had our trust in. He was at the peak of his ministry. And my brothers and sisters, sir, nobody knew that he was going to be taken away suddenly. But contained in the scriptures were scriptures for our day. That brothers, God intended to be opened so that they would have understood uh, that it did not end uh, every, everything with just with Brother Branham. He had his purpose and he had his plan and the revelatory spirit would continue. So that is why we see in Luke chapter 12 verses 37, Jesus said this before the crucifixion. He said, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, brothers and sisters, uh, not when he comes uh, in the rapture or comes uh, for the second coming of Christ in the millennium. No, when down here on earth, God would have had servants, starting with Brother Branham, and I would say food would be delivered. God says, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. In other words, God, Jesus expected his disciples to have watched after three days, I'm going to rise. But somehow it was blank to them. The end time ministry and the end time church and individuals, they were supposed to be watching this hour. Because soon, brothers and sisters, uh, when that explosion starts in the Middle East, you're not going to have time to then say, what does Luke 12, 37 mean? Brothers and sisters, you've got to realize it's not going to be small. At the moment, a nuclear warship is moving into the Middle East, the, the USA uh, warship. China is having its war games around Taiwan. Ukraine is having its warfare. And they, the devil wants to, brothers, exterminate the nation of Israel in that sense. Brothers, at this time, the bride of Christ, the servants of the Lord, Jesus, this is what he would expect them to do. When he, cometh, when he comes with what? He's coming for a fresh opening of his word. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. Brothers, when we were seated in denominationalism, brothers and sisters, that eager cry called us out and said, come and sit down. What a wonder it was to know, brothers, that the systems uh, were not the true churches, they were lodges. Come, brothers and sisters, and he opened uh, the truths in the book of Genesis and Revelation. But when he did that, brothers and sisters, uh, he was not going to only come one time, but he was going to come, I would say, in three segments to deliver a portion of that carcass. And my brothers and sisters, and if he shall come in the second watch, or he come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. In other words, the church of the living God and the servants 
in all the last three watches of our time, they cannot be caught sleeping. They got to be watching for the word for their day and their time. And my brothers and sisters, that is why Jesus, as much as is the one with all the compassion and the love, he had to tell them, oh fools and slow to art, why have you not understood what was written in the scriptures? And my brothers and sisters saw, yes, the first watch was under Brother Branham, but then the world Brothers and sisters, it is not that they can't see that there is something in the word of God. Why Jesus was crucified by the Pharisees? You read it. Pilate said, out of envy, they crucified Jesus Christ. They, they could not match what God was doing through him. And my brothers, why couldn't people take that God could use another man like Brother Jackson? Brothers and sisters, no, well, he just got an eighth grade education. If we accept what he said, uh, then we have to just humble ourselves and go with what is being said. And you know, they are got the vocabulary, brothers and sisters, from here to there. The eloquence will just take over. Brothers and sisters, again, it's envy and jealousy. that The door is closed. And the same thing in this hour. Why cannot individuals see uh, that there are three watches in the scripture? It is not a difficult thing to understand. Well, if we believe that, then we have to go along, you know, with this and that and he and she. We don't, we don't want to go that way. We want to be in that class. Brothers and sisters, you pay a price for that. Brothers and sisters, remember... These are God's scripture that said, Blessed are those servants that understand that there are three watches in this hour of time. And for each of those watch, there's a special meal that God wants to give His people. Brothers, if you make a mistake, God can forgive you. If you don't understand, God can help you along the way. Just have an open heart and just look to Him and He will open that scripture to your soul. Because my brothers and sisters, remember, when the Middle East explodes, the rapture is not taking place the next day. You'll still be here for a short while. So what's going to come out of this podium? What's going to come out of uh, the podiums of the Bride of Christ? Are you going to just keep repeating, brothers, what happened yesterday? Or in the third watch, isn't God going to have something more for His people that are expectant and waiting and looking for? If they're not expecting in the past, uh, they're not going to be expecting now. So, brothers, that is why it's of vital importance that at this hour we see that Brothers, uh, just as Jesus broke the bread, he sat them down. Brothers, uh, he sat the ministry down to show them there's more than just what was in bygone days. And God says, this know, that if the good man of the house had known what, how uh, in Matthew it says, what watch, the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Brothers, you've got to realize, if situations are the way they are, brothers and sisters, the counselors are not going to get any better. Our water situation, brothers, we, we must try and do what we have to do. But people are selfish. As long as they got it, they're fine. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> and when the Middle East explodes, Brothers and sisters, we've got to understand the world at large is not going to have excess finances to give other people to do this and that. But remember, just as when there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. Brothers and sisters, uh, the children of Israel, they knew exactly what God is doing. And brothers, when they crossed the Red Sea, they saw Pharaoh's army all destroyed. There was a day of jubilation on the shores. And it says here that if we had known in what watch, brothers and sisters, in this Laodicean church age, we are to know 
that there was more than the coming of Elijah in Malachi 4.5. We should have known that there was to be, brothers and sisters, an apostolic ministry to unravel fastly, brothers and sisters, a continuation from Brother Branham and then that fivefold ministry would, brothers and sisters, move on in this third watch. So Jesus sat on the table. He broke the bread in a certain way. And brothers, Jesus is sitting in our heart's table. He is breaking a special bread to us. It's not a dry crumb. It's a stimulated, revelated word for your day and your time. And my brothers, uh, we will recognize it by the way, brothers and sisters, the taste of that word. And brothers, he gives it to his disciples. And we have to realize, brothers, from 63, God had a carcass and the portions have been broken to the church of the living God. Brothers, we are here now in 2023. As much as all that is going on, to see, brothers, how this picture is drawing to a close, to see, brothers and sisters, the Israel is needing brothers and sisters God on the side because you cannot have a small state brothers I think they say uh, Israel can fit 60 times in Ukraine that's how tiny it is and my brothers they're being porked by everyone and my brothers and sisters you can be rest assured Israel has got a plan and God has a bigger plan than what they have and my brothers and sisters uh, that is why I have to say, what is Jesus breaking to us at this hour of time? If he is walking with us by the Holy Spirit, what is he unraveling to us? What would he be saying to the church of the living God? Brothers, sir, what picture would he be giving to us? Brothers, as he stands in the midst of the seven candlesticks, he's been walking through the seven candlesticks. He's reaching this last, I would say, church age, ending of it. And there's much he's got to say to the church. My brothers and sisters, he'll want us to know that just as there was a valley of dry bones, just as Jesus was crucified, there was a resurrection. We've seen the nation of Israel. It went through that valley of dry bones. After, I would say, 75 years, they are being resurrected to be a nation. The world is jealous about it. They want to push it away. And my brothers and sisters, but there's an army in heaven, and there's an army, earthly army on earth. And my brothers, what a day it's going to be when we see, brothers and sisters, that Israel is going to reach a point where she'll be crying out, and God is going to come down and show his power at that hour. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> when that happens, the world is going to move on in a time of trouble. Because remember, brothers, a temple is going to be built. Russia, no doubt, is going to stop worrying about Ukraine. And she's going to say, I've got to put my finger in, in Israel. Who is Israel? She's got everything now. And she will come down the mountains of Israel. Brothers and sisters, that is when Ezekiel 38 and 39 will take place. And at that time, it will be almost time for Jesus to break that final seal. Brothers, he will be still walking, talking to the church of the living God to give us updated information of his soon appearing. Brothers and sisters, so we see brothers and sisters, but as... Jesus disappeared. They said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? Brothers, when they were walking, their hearts were not burning. They were sad. They were sorrowful. They were dejected. But what made the heart burn? What uplifted the heart? Jesus began at Moses, he opened the scriptures to them. He opened their understandings. And they said, 
did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures. Opening the scriptures wasn't just turning the scriptures. The Bible says he expounded. He gave the understanding of it. Brothers and sisters, God in his grace and mercy has looked upon us in this hour of time. Yes, this may be a building. It is just a brick building. But God is looking at those within that building. What they have inside their heart. Brothers and sisters, there's no ways for any individual to set the fire aflame. Did not our hearts burn within us by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, people want to go the way of tradition. But the world is going to be caught on fire. I cannot tell you, brothers and sisters, how this picture is un unraveling. It's fluid. At times it may go down, it may go up. But brothers and sisters, uh, I cannot see the government of Israel just sitting back and saying, well, let them do what they do. When you got the Houthis in the making, and you got the tentacles of Iran everywhere, and you got Syria who had all the problems for the past 13, 14 years, wanting to send missiles, and Lebanon, and Hamas, and brothers, the, the rest locking themselves in the, the mosque. Brothers, what do they want? They don't want Israel in Israel. They want it out. And my brothers and sisters, that is why I have to say, God is going to put on display the little nation of Israel. And while the world has forgotten what God did over the past, seven, uh, say, 50 odd years through Brother Branham's ministry and the follow up of it, they've forgotten about the bride of Christ. But brothers and sisters, God will put his church on display, a short display, to say, this is my bride. This is my people. This is whom I wanted to walk with, with the scriptures. That is why I want to thank God, brothers. Over the crust of the earth, there were many broad ways that all of us could have followed. There are many accolades that you could have accumulated if you want to. But what's the purpose, brothers? Sleep on one bed, you eat one plate of food. Brothers and sisters, you don't have two stomachs, you just have one. Thank God for that. We're not going to leave nothing behind for nobody. Brothers and sisters say, uh, if they want it, they can take what we have. What does it matter, brothers? There's a millennium coming. That's our focus. What made Jesus go through the cross? The joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. That is why, brothers, even after three days of all that went on, he can step on the road to Emmaus uh, and start a conversation of scripture. And open the hearts of his children. He'll do the same today. The Holy Ghost doesn't change. And he relights the candle. He relights the fire. That is why, brothers, no matter what is taking place across the world, we have to be responsible people. But let's not lose our focus. Let's walk with God while he opens the scriptures to us. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Heavenly Father... We are a thankful people living at this hour of time. Lord, as we see the world, Lord, many of them have gone to sleep scriptural wise, but your children, my Father, has tried to stay awake in this hour of time. I pray that you'll bless each and every one of them. Lord, across the world in the many churches, Lord, Father, bless every child that has a heart and hunger for your truth and your word. Lord, your spirit is able to set the flame. Take that carcass of your word. And Lord, feed thy people across the world, my God. We come at, Lord, this service now in your hands. Bless us as we go our different ways. Minister our souls, Lord. Father, I pray that your presence will ignite the hearts and preserve the nation of Israel, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's sing a closing song at this moment. Ah.